Hey what is going on everyone this is Wicked and today I will show you a custom ROM which surprised me hell of a lot. I wasn't expecting this but I have to tell you we have a new custom ROM champion in terms of customization options. Here are some features extracted from the changelog of this new 1.1.1 version of Batman ROM. The ROM is available for the following devices, make sure you download the right one for your model. It is based on the latest QF7 official base from Samsung, has of course its own app called Batman settings where you can customize everything in this ROM and, of course, along with those, many mods, tweaks, which I will discuss later on. Anyways, this is Wicked and that means I'll do this review in a wicked manner. You don't know what a wicked manner is, let's find out. I will show you what is this ROM all about, how fast and stable it feels and of course the usual Antutu benchmark and gaming test, where I'll put the GPU to the test by running two GPU intensive games, need for speed no limits and, as many of you requested, Modern Combat 5. Without further ado, let's get wicked. Ok, to the installation procedure. In order to install this, you'll need TWRP recovery. If you don't know what TWRP recovery is or how to install it, check the video in the car section. Of course, the first step of getting this ROM installed is getting into TWRP. Once there, if you just want to keep your current settings and restore them back later, make sure you watch my tutorial on how to do it. Then go to install and select Batman ROM.zip and swipe to install. A ROM installer with a beautiful Batman animation will pop up. I do always recommend wiping your device before flashing a new ROM, so that's why I will select this option here. Then in ROM installer you'll find tons of customization options and features like your preferred kernel, build prop, tweaks, CSC features, routing methods, dual speaker mod, system user interface settings, modem and bootloader update, make sure you install them if you have older ones or just install them to be safe. You can debloat the ROM by choosing which Samsung or Google app uh, to be installed and so on and so forth. At the end you should have the ROM installed on your device. You can safely reboot your device. Take in mind that the first booting process will take up to 7 minutes, so grab a cookie or something and wait. So my phone booted up, I have put all my credentials in, all my information, played with it for a couple of minutes and I have to tell you I'm surprised. Why? Because from the beginning it felt pretty customizable since I saw the different positioning of the Wi-Fi and signal icons in the status bar, the battery bar and since we're here why won't we just discuss the customization options of this ROM. As I told you in the beginning of the video the ROM is fully controlled by an app the Batman settings app. Here you'll find tons and tons of features, slide the left bar to get into system user interface settings, where you can choose from different battery settings, activate battery bar, hide the stock battery and so on and so forth. Sometimes you may need to reboot the system user interface app in order to get features working perfectly, but that's normal. You have the ability to customize the clock settings by activating 3 minute dock, I'm not really into this feature but I'll give it a try anyways. Instead of this you can go for different clock styles, change the font, color, how it looks like, you know no, these kind of features which you would normally expect from a CM based ROM, not from a TouchWiz based one. The result is amazing and it looks pretty neat. Into the Wi Fi and signal icon settings, here you can customize the position to the left side of the status bar. You can choose from different Wi Fi, mobile, and alarm icons, lock screen mods, everything here is self explanatory. In the recent panel, you can activate a blurring effect, the AKP RAM bar, along with a really unique matrix animation in the background. This is freaking amazing. Of course, you can play with all the settings here, you can change the colors of everything related to the status bar, quick settings, icons, you can set up a dynamic status bar which will borrow the color from the running app and many many more. You will also have some phone specific settings like incoming, outgoing, auto record, framework, preferences regarding some power options, shortcut like screenshot, uh, flashlight and uh, also you can change the toast animation. In the notification panel I found out the most interesting feature since I got an Android phone and it's been like 8 years. A Along with the blurring effect added to the notification bar, you can set up a GIF animation and I chose this beautiful little bird, which looks absolutely amazing and it gives you a really 3D effect. That's insane, absolutely insane and I really like it. Anyways, many other features are available but we won't get into all of them since it would take me forever to review this beautiful ROM. There is also an OTA Batman ROM updater which will allow you to easily upgrade to a newer version when it will be available. Now. We have tons of customization options but what about the performance of this ROM? It is running the latest Batstock kernel and I will power up onto the benchmark to see how it performs. 
The result though was somehow really disappointing. It is the lowest score I got in a test like this and that's pretty surprising. The result may change if you will flash a custom kernel for example, but since I'm not here to test that possibility, that's the score it got. On to the gaming test, I powered up Need for Speed No Limits and the first gameplay ran smooth without any hiccups. Since many of you requested the Modern Combat 5 game as a new GPU intensive game, I decided to give it a try. FPSs aren't really my type of games, but I have to say the game looks pretty neat. Also, I couldn't detect any lag while playing the game. So despite of the bad score it got in a to the benchmark, the phone feels and behaves great. Of course, there are some minor bugs with this ROM since a lot of customization options are available, but uh, I'm sure they will be fixed in the next releases. I was really surprised about this ROM. The RAM usage was somehow pretty high compared to other ROMs I tested, and also I felt that the battery life was somehow draining faster, but not such a huge difference from a stock ROM. That's why this bad ROM will get a wicked score of 4 out of 5 which is pretty good. I'm sure it will score better next time. Anyways, that was the ROM walkthrough for today. I hope you like it. If you did, make sure you click that thumbs up button and subscribe right down to my channel for more awesome ROMs, mods, hacks, tutorials on the Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus. Thank you for watching. As always, take care. Wicked is out. Bye bye.